Okay, now coming to the particular assignment that I want you to do. The two properties that I want you to use to plot the star are the two easiest properties, and that's the luminosity and the spectral type. Well, I already have some examples that I've done on this one. I've randomly made four stars and given them names, Jack, Mary, Jill, and Bob. Okay? And I've plotted them so you can see how you're going to do yours. So Jack, you see the spectral type is A1. So Jack is A1. You know what, we could even look at this kind of tilted so we can see it easier. Um, And you can kind of see it here easier. I've given you how to color it here. Any star from 3,000 to 4,500 Kelvin, color it red. You see? See? Any star from 4,500 to 5,000 Kelvin, color it orange. 5,000 to 6,000 yellow, 6,000 to 10,000 green. And then remember that finished product, it's going to look like the one, the last one that I showed you, after you're all done, you're going to look like that. And then from 10,000 to 30,000 blue, from 30,000 to the end, violet. You see, that's the color. And then the, the stars that I made up are here. Jack. Okay, so let's say Jack spectral type is A1 and it's 735 times as bright as the sun. So the first thing you have to do when the luminosity is not given to you in scientific notation is to change it to scientific. Okay, is this scientific notation 735? No. So you gotta go over to the left one, two, 7.35 times 10 to the second, okay? So you have to change it. So this is gonna be some practice for you changing the numbers to scientific. Mary. There's no spectral type for Mary, okay? She happens to be a white dwarf star. Is the spectral type already given in scientific? 2.6 times 10 to the minus three? Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Jill, K8, spectral type 4.8 times 10 to the fifth? That's also given to you already in scientific notation, okay? Bob, F1, 0.85, is that scientific? No, to be scientific, you got to be the decimal point after the first number, right? So you got to move it over to the right. When you move it over to the right, what happens to the power? Times 10 to the power negative 1. So 0.85 is 8.5 times 10 to the power negative 1 so that the decimal goes back to the left when you multiply it, you see? So you change it to scientific. Now once you've done that, you're ready to plot it. So let's rotate back. <clears throat> okay, look at um, Jack, where Jack was. So Jack was a uh, what? A1 star, so what do you have to do? You have to first find A1, and then you have to keep going up, keep going up, and then maybe you can have a ruler there. Keep going up, keep going up, and then follow it. And then until you find, uh, what was its luminosity? Um, 7.35 times 10 to the second. So you have to find the 10 to the second line you see here. And then you go seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see, a little bit above seven. That's where Jack is. 7.35, you see. So as long as it's a little bit above seven, I'm fine with that. It doesn't have to be 0.35, you know. Okay, between seven and eight, is, you're fine. So that's where Jack is. Um, okay, where was, let's do uh, Jill right now. 
Jill was K8, so look at K, look at 8. Keep going up, keep going up. And then what was the luminosity of Jill? 4.8 times 10 to the fifth, right? So 10 to the fifth, 4.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.8, okay? So that's where Jill is. So it's not that bad. It's pretty straightforward. Um, where was Bob? Let's look at Bob. Bob was F1. 8.5 times 10 to the negative 1, okay? Find 10 to the negative 1. There's 10 to the negative 1. 10 to the negative 1, you see? So first find F1, and that's here. Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. And then this is 10 to the negative 1. And then go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 1. So right there. Okay? How about the Mary? Now, the one tricky thing with Mary is that she happens to be a white dwarf star, no spectral type. The only thing that's given to you is luminosity, 2.6 times 10 to the minus 3, okay? So you, you can locate 10 to the minus 3, go up 2.6, and then how far do you, to the right do you go? You, do you just keep going? I mean, when do you end? There's no spectral type given. The one piece of information that we know is that white dwarfs lie along this, roughly this region, remember? We are now were showing it to you earlier. So white dwarfs typically end up being about 100th the size of the sun, which is approximately the size of the Earth, okay? So this is what I want you to do as a general rule for white dwarfs. No matter what its luminosity is, just keep going until put a dot around the vicinity of that line. So you could put it here, you could put it here, it doesn't matter, on the left or on the right. So you see, that's what I did. I just kept going. I put a dot to the left of this line. I could have put a dot on the right side. I would have been fine, as long as you're in the vicinity of that line. So if, you, if your white dwarf was here, you would go, you would go, you would go. Then you would put it somewhere here or here, you see? That's kind of where they would go, around that line, you see? So the, I've chosen these four examples as very good examples of the different kinds of stars you might have. You might have a white dwarf. You might have one that's um, brighter than the sun. That's a, that's a main sequence star. You see Jack, like Jack right here, is a main sequence star brighter than the sun. I've given like a Bob. Bob is a main sequence star that's dimmer than the sun. And then I've given a supergiant. Jill, okay? Very, very bright. So those are the different kinds. Okay, so now you might say, which stars are we going to plot? Here they are. So if you print this out from my website, you will already see I have a little dash next to them. Dash, 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 dash. From the near stars chart, you should find 10 of them that I have a dash next to. 10 of them, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if you go below, and then nine and 10. So which two pieces of information is the easiest to plot the stars? It's the spectral type, you see? So for example, Alpha Centauri B, K0. The, the Roman numeral five next to it is not necessarily very helpful all it's telling you is that it's a main sequence star. It's not a dying star yet. So you don't really need that Roman numeral to do any plotting. See, these are all main sequence. These are white dwarf. These are all main sequence. So the, the only one you need is the first two, K0, G2, those ones. And the other information that's best to plot, luminosity, OK? So if you do spectral, luminosity, two pieces of info, that's enough to plot it, you see? If the luminosity is not given to you in scientific notation, first change it to scientific and then plot it, you see? Bright stars. 
Arcturus, Vega, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again, the spectral type would be this one, A1, F0, K2, G2, A0. Again, don't worry about the Roman numerals. The Roman numerals just tell you if it's a main sequence star or a giant star or a subgiant. The only one you need is the spectral type, M1, B1, K5, and then you're gonna use the luminosity again, okay? So there should be 10 on this list, 10 on that list, and you should be set. Once you do the plotting, then you, um, then you color it. So if we go to the one, let's go to the one that you're gonna use, the empty one. So I want you to do the plotting of the empty one. Notice on the bottom, I didn't complete the spectral types. I wanted you to complete it, okay? So if you have it right now, you can take one or two minutes. Here's what I want you to do. O0, O1, O2, O3, O4, until 9. Then go B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9, A0, A1, A2. You do the numbering. Complete the numbering in sequence until you get to the end. So I'll give you a minute. Okay, you got that? You should end around M5 by the time you get to the end, M5. And then there's a little bit more room. You can go to M6, M7, M8, M9, so on, like that. There, you, you run out of room over there, but you can go on if you need it more. Now, how are you going to color it? Remember on the other sheet, it told you anything from 3,000 to 4,500. So if we go back to the empty one, after you're done, color, uh, after you're done plotting them, anything from here to here, the whole thing, color it red. You can even give it to your son, daughter, nephew, niece, anyone. Have them color it nicely with a crayon. But don't have it be dark because you need to see the um, star behind the color, right? It can't be too dark. So you color it all the way until you get to the top. And then from 4,500 to 5,000, then you color that orange. So as you're going this way, the, the colors of the stars are changing from red all the way until you get to here, it's going to be violet. From 30,000 to the end, you're going to color it violet. Okay. Beyond that is ultraviolet, but we don't see that. Okay.